Welcome to another episode of Tactical Tuesday with Modern Milsim. Through this podcast, we will bring you real-world tactics, techniques, and procedures that will enable you to succeed on the Milsim battlefield. It's time to make ready. Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Tactical Tuesday with Modern Milsim. As always, I am your host, Craig White. Thank you for being here. Before we get into today's topic, I want to mention that I just got back from Operation Sirius Viking hosted by Third Coast Airsoft at the Guardian Centers in Perry, Georgia. This is the first time that civilians have been allowed on that facility in five years. It is a very interesting AO with variations of terrain that make fire maneuver much more difficult. I came home happy, but very tired, and hence the delay in publishing this episode. If you get an opportunity to attend a Milsim event at the Guardian Center, do it. Now, today we're going to talk about danger areas, including not only how to identify a danger area, but also the tactics, techniques, and procedures for dealing with them. So let's get to it. Army Techniques Publication 3-21.8 defines danger areas as areas along a route where the terrain could expose the unit or patrol to enemy observation, fire, or both. Because the increased risk inherent with danger areas, and unless time restraints require crossing them, it is better to bypass danger areas whenever possible. And unfortunately, and as we will be discussing later in this episode, most linear danger areas must be crossed. When that is the case, a unit or patrol must cross the danger area as quickly and as carefully as possible. Crossing danger areas is achieved by the use of battle drills designed to get the unit or patrol to the other side of the danger area with the least amount of exposure to enemy observation and fire, as well as the maximum amount of necessary firepower positioned to deflect or defeat an enemy attack. In essence, the unit or patrol will move from one concealed position to another and through the danger area as quickly and as safely as possible. So before we get into the tactics, techniques, and procedures for crossing or otherwise dealing with danger areas, we need to discuss how to identify them. Danger areas are categorized as either linear or open area. A linear danger area is defined as an area where the patrol or unit's flanks are exposed along a fairly narrow line of sight or field of fire. Examples of linear danger areas include crossing streets, roads, trails, and streams. In contrast, an open danger area is just what it sounds like. It is an open area where the unit or patrol is exposed to enemy observation and or fire from multiple directions. Open danger areas are typically forest clearings, pastures, fields, and things of that nature. Be aware that creeks, trails, and roads become open danger areas if the unit or patrol travels along their length as opposed to crossing over them. This is because the patrol or unit is using these terrain features as an avenue of approach as opposed to an obstacle that needs to be crossed. Open danger areas and linear danger areas can be further described as whether they are large or small. Roads, paths, creeks, and open fields present opportunities to the enemy to ambush a unit or patrol. Similarly, both natural and man-made obstacles allow for fairly long sectors of fire because they are relatively clear of cover or concealment. In essence, you should consider any open ground as a danger area. Open ground provides enemy support weapons with wide sectors of fire for them to mow down friendly forces. As most of you know, machine guns are particularly effective against infantry in the open. For example, think of the no man's land that is between opposing trench lines in World War I. The patrol or unit OIC must assess and determine what type of danger area is presented to him before deciding which way to handle it. Whenever possible, the patrol or unit should circumvent or bypass danger areas. If the unit or patrol must cross a danger area, the OIC decides how the unit or patrol will cross it based on mission time constraints, the size of his unit or patrol, the size of the danger area in question, the potential enemy fields of fire into the danger area, and the size and number of security elements he has available to post. Depending on the type of the danger area, the size of the danger area, and the crossing technique used to cross it, a small unit may cross all at once by buddy pairs or by individual player. So let's talk about open danger areas first. The first method is the detour method. With this method, the unit OIC designates a rally point on the opposite side of the small open danger area on the same bearing as the original travel route. After considering this distance to the other side of the danger area, 
as well as the terrain, cover, and concealment present around the small open danger area, the OIC decides on which side of the open area the unit will move. The unit then moves around the edges of the danger area using the wood line and vegetation along that route for cover and concealment. Once the unit reaches the far side rally point, it continues its normal movement. This method is also sometimes referred to as the contour around open area method. The second method is the box method. As with the detour method, the patrol or unit OIC designates a far side rally point on the other side of the danger area that is on the same bearing as the original travel route. Using OCOKA, O-C-O-K-A methodology, the OIC will then decide on which side of the danger area the unit will move. The main difference between the detour method and the box method is that the unit uses a series of 90 degree turns to stay away from the wood line or edges of the open danger area while moving around it. This technique is also sometimes referred to as the detour bypass method. Both methods of bypassing small open areas have their advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of the box method is the unit or patrol using it will usually have better concealment and cover than with the detour method. Unfortunately, remaining deeper in the woods, brush, or other concealment will also likely obscure lines of sight to potential threats in the danger area and on the other side of it. The detour method provides better visibility into and across the danger area in question, but potentially makes the unit or patrol more vulnerable to observation and fire from points around it. With a large open danger area, mission time constraints can often become an issue. If time constraints prevent bypassing large open areas, the unit or patrol should use a combination of either traveling overwatch or bounding overwatch movement techniques to cross large open danger areas depending on the likelihood of enemy contact. Unlike open areas, linear danger areas often cannot be bypassed and must be crossed. There are essentially three methods or techniques for crossing linear danger areas. The first method is patch to the road. The patch to the road technique utilizes speed of the crossing as a means of providing security. This method should allow a squad-sized element to cross a small linear danger area in 10 seconds or less. This method also allows the squad to maintain a column formation for better control and communication by the squad leader. Here's how it works. First, the point man brings the unit or patrol to a halt and signals that he has come upon a danger area. The unit OIC comes forward to view the danger area and decide on the method for negotiating it. Second, if the patch to the road method is selected, the OIC communicates this decision to members of the unit or patrol, preferably via appropriate hand signals. Third, troops close up their spacing so that they are shoulder to shoulder and in close proximity to players in front of and behind them. This allows troops to move quickly. Unfortunately, it also results in troops bunching up immediately before crossing the danger area. As such, the unit should perform its combat dispersion as soon as possible once the linear danger area is crossed. Fourth, the unit's two-man security team moves to the front of the formation. Fifth, at the OIC's signal, the first security man steps up to the danger area only as far as necessary to look left and right along the length of the danger area. Sixth, if the linear danger area is clear of enemy presence, the first security man takes a position so that he can look down the linear danger area to his right. In doing so, the first security man's left shoulder should be facing toward the center of the danger area. He is now also called the near side security man. Seventh, as soon as the first security man levels his weapon down the linear danger area, the second security man crosses the danger area and takes a position on the opposite side while looking down the linear danger area to his right. In doing so, the second security man's left shoulder should be facing the center of the danger area. This should result in each security man looking down the linear danger area in opposite directions. The second security man is now called the far side security man. Eighth, as soon as the second security man takes his position and levels his weapon down the danger area, the unit OIC signals the rest of the unit's members to run across the danger area. Ninth, after the unit point man initially crosses the danger area, he rushes into the wood line to inspect it for booby traps and to ensure it is safe for occupation by the rest of the unit. Tenth, as the last member of the unit passes the near side security man, he calls out last man or hits him on the shoulder so that the security man will join up with the rest of the unit and cross the danger area. Eleventh, as the near side security man passes the far side security man, he calls out last man or hits him on the shoulder so that the far security man leaves his position and forms up at the rear of the unit. Twelfth, 
The unit now continues its movement as originally planned. It is critical that the security team maintains overwatch down each side of the linear danger area until the unit successfully traverses the danger area. The OIC directs them to hide from oncoming traffic if the danger area is a road or something similar, or that the unit becomes involved in a firefight. Should the unit have to break contact with the enemy, members of the unit rendezvous at the last designated en route rally point. The second method of crossing a linear danger area is the heart-shaped technique. This method is used when a unit or patrol has to cross a linear danger area in territory where there is expected enemy contact or where the linear danger area is so large to cross quickly with patch-to-the-road method. The heart-shaped method makes maximum use of security and combat power, but is time-consuming. A squad-sized element using the heart-shaped method typically takes three to five minutes to cross the danger area in question. So here's how the heart-shaped method works. First, the point man brings the unit or patrol to a halt and signals that he has come upon a danger area. The unit OIC comes forward to view the danger area and decide on the method for negotiating it. Second, if the heart-shaped method is selected, the OIC communicates this to the members of the unit or patrol, preferably via appropriate hand signals. Third, the unit or patrol OIC places a two-man security team 20 to 50 yards to his right on the near side of the linear danger area and another two-man security team 20 to 50 yards on his left on the near side of the danger area. Fourth, after designating an easily identifiable train feature or object on the far side of the danger area that is in line with the unit's direction of movement, the OIC will direct a third two-man security team to cross the danger area and take an initial position at the designated train feature or object. This third security team is also called the far side security team. Fifth, the far side security team crosses the danger area in a manner dictated by the situation. It may crawl, walk, or run there depending on the situation. During that time, the left and right near security teams provide overwatch for the far side team. Sixth, once the far side security team reaches a concealed position in the wood line on the far side of the danger area, it immediately conducts a sales check, SLLS. If the enemy is detected, the far side security team returns to unit OIC on the near side of the linear danger area and advises him of that fact. Seventh, if no enemy is detected, the far side security team physically inspects a concealed area large enough for the entire unit to fit. The security team achieves this by walking a designated distance straight back into the wood line. Once the team walks that designated distance, each member of the team turns away from the other and paces off another designated distance to clear the flanks before moving back to their original position where they previously conducted their sales check. When observed from the top down, this movement by the far side security team members should resemble a heart shape. Eighth, once both far side security team members return to their original position and confirm no enemy presence, they give the OIC the thumbs up hand signal to indicate that the far side is secure and that the far side security team is also monitoring the danger area in question. Ninth, at this point, the remaining members of the unit, less the near side security teams, cross the danger area using the same route as that used by the far side security team. At this point, both left and right near side security teams maintain overwatch for the rest of the unit as it crosses the danger area. Tenth, when the rest of the unit is located safely on the other side of the danger area, the OIC will signal the left and right near side security teams to cross the danger area using the same route as the far side security team to rejoin the rest of the unit. Should the unit have to break contact with the enemy, members of the unit rendezvous at the last designated en route rally point. The near side security teams provide suppressing fire and smoke to facilitate the withdrawal of the rest of the unit to the last designated en route rally point and then follows behind them to cover their withdrawal. So now that we have talked about the difference between the types of danger areas and the tactics, techniques, and procedures for addressing them, let's talk a little bit about specific examples of danger areas and additional considerations for addressing them. So here we go. The first one is open areas. In most cases, avoid crossing open areas and bypass them instead. If you must cross a small open area, use either the patch to the road or heart-shaped methods to cross them. The second one is roads and trails. 
across roads or trails at or near a bend, a narrow spot, or on low ground where exposure to enemy observation and fire is at its lowest. The third one is villages. Pass villages on the downwind side and well away from them. Avoid animals, especially dogs, which might reveal the unit or patrol's presence. The fourth one is enemy positions. Seek to pass such positions on the downwind side so as to avoid detection. Be alert for tripwires and other warning devices while doing so. The fifth one is minefields. Bypass minefields, if at all possible, even if it means lengthening the unit or patrol route by a significant distance. Only clear a path through minefields when it is absolutely necessary. The sixth one is streams. Select a narrow spot on the stream, offering concealment on both sides. Observe the far side carefully and place near and far side security for early warning. Clear the far side and then cross rapidly but quietly to avoid enemy detection. And the seventh one is wire obstacles. Avoid wire obstacles altogether. The enemy is likely to be covering them with its observation and fire. So let's talk about a platoon crossing a danger area. Unlike the squad where its troops may move through the danger area individually or via buddy pairs, platoons typically move through the danger area by a complete squads one at a time. As each squad passes through the danger area, it moves to an overwatch position or to the far side rally point based on its OIC's orders until directed to do otherwise. So here are the steps used by a platoon to cross a linear danger area. First, when the lead squad signals danger area as relayed throughout the entire platoon, it stops. Second, the platoon leader, along with the platoon sergeant, moves forward and confirms the danger area. They then determine what method should be used to cross the danger area at issue. Third, the platoon leader will then inform all squad leaders of his decision and designates the near and far side rally points. Fourth, the platoon sergeant then directs the position of the near side security teams on both left and right side of the crossing point. Typically, these security teams are composed of troops from the trailing squad. For clarification, the trailing squad is the rear squad in the platoon's formation. Fifth, the platoon leader reconnoiters the danger area and selects the crossing point that provides the best cover and concealment. Sixth, the near side security teams observe the flanks and overwatch the crossing point. Seventh, once near side security is in place, the platoon leader directs the far side security team to cross the danger area. Eighth, the far side security team clears the far side of the danger area. Ninth, the far side security team leaders establish an observation point forward of the cleared area and notifies the platoon leader through his own squad leader that the danger area is clear. Tenth, the platoon leader confirms the crossing method to use. Eleventh, the platoon quickly and quietly crosses the danger area. Twelfth, once across the danger area, the main body of the platoon moves slowly to the far side rally point. Thirteenth, the near side security element along with the platoon sergeant crosses the danger area at the same crossing point as used by the rest of the platoon. And then finally, 14, the platoon reorganizes before continuing on its mission or patrol. Now, it should be noted that the platoons following the lead platoon will cross the danger area without conducting its own recon and establishing far side security. Because of its size, the platoon will usually resort to the heart-shaped method of crossing linear danger areas. So now let's talk about reacting to enemy contact while crossing danger areas. As indicated earlier in this episode, a unit should break contact with the enemy if contact is initiated before the unit commits to crossing the danger area. This allows the OIC to better position its units to a more advantageous position to either repel an attack or to initiate a counterattack. Once the decision to break contact is made, friendly troops need to withdraw to the last designated en route rally point for reorganization and reconsolidation. In the event that the unit makes contact on the opposite side of the danger area, and before it reaches concealment or cover, it should treat the attack as a near ambush and assault through it. So in closing, remember that a danger areas are a fluid concept where the unit OIC must make decisions regarding whether to cross a danger area or bypass it because of time mission constraints. If you must cross a danger area, typically do so at its narrowest point where enemy observation and fires are at a minimum. Finally, recognize that crossing a danger area can easily turn into a near ambush. As such, security teams need to maintain vigilance in conducting their duties 
including providing overwatch for the unit members crossing the danger area. Recognizing danger areas and knowing tactics, techniques, and procedures for dealing with them will serve to protect your unit and maintain its effectiveness in the field. Next week, we're going to discuss the tactical mindset, including situational awareness and application of Boyd's OODA, OODA loop. If you have any topics you would like to see covered in future episodes of Tactical Tuesday, please let us know by posting it on the Modern Milsim Facebook page. If it's not one of the topics we are already planning to cover, we will likely add it to our ever-growing topic list. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, as well as many other podcast directories. As always, thank you for your support, and I'll see you in our next episode. See you then. To our listeners out there, thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to providing you with new episodes every two weeks. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast, please subscribe and provide us with a review. We want to know what you like and how we can improve. You can also contact us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash modern milsim with any suggestions you may have. In our next episode of Tactical Tuesday, we will discuss the tactical mindset and its importance on the milsim battlefield, including situational awareness and application of Boyd's OODA loop. If you want to know more about application of real-world tactics, techniques, and procedures to MILSIM, please check out From Alpha to Omega, a MILSIM tactical primer and training manual, as well as From Insertion to Extraction, Advanced MILSIM CQB Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures. Both books are available at Amazon.com. As always, thank you for your support, and I'll see you at our next installment of Tactical Tuesday.